to another After Dark Comics Unleashed. I'm your host, as always, Jamie J. Dub. With me is the multi-talented owner of Instagram himself, Dan Kelly. Tell them where they can find you when you're not doing Codex stuff. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Dan Kelly Art. You know the deal, post stuff. Go give me a follow. Go give me some likes. Um, I'm actually going to show off some stuff tonight uh, that I just got back that I will be – one of them I already posted posted on the uh, page there that will be available for purchase or is available for purchase. So you go check it out. And um, yeah. as I say, uh, buy something so that your money may become my money so that I can use that money. I usually say to buy comics, but at this point it's getting hot and I'd like to get the air conditioning fixed in my car. So I'll probably, <laughs> I would like that. You don't have the 4WD air conditioning system? 4WD60? <laughs> you know what that one is? Oh, the, the door windows down? Four windows down, 60 miles an hour. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm That's what I'm doing now, which is great. Until I uh, was going to pick my daughter up from school the other day, and I pulled on the road, and there was an accident, so traffic was just stopped. So I'm just sitting there. I'm like, oh, okay, so I got the sun and I got the heat, but I don't have the wind. I am now a baked potato. <laughs> I, I used to I used to come back from when, you know working metro working that hot job doing all the you know I was double A gardener doing all the landscaping work and I would after being in the sun all day I'd get in the car and I'd have an hour drive going home I wouldn't even use the AC because I was already hot and nasty what the hell am I going to try to feel good for now I might as well be hot and nasty the rest of the way home you know all <laughs> that's going to do is make me cold that all that's going to do is chill all that's going to do is is chill the sweat. That I'm already soaked in. <laughs> well, yeah, that's how the ladies like me. Hot and nasty. Hot and nasty. There you go. All right. Then there's Uncle Gary. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, Gary, tell them where they can find you and all the other events that are coming up, even, you know, the anniversary. Okay. Well, so you can find me at Comic Logic. We're Loudoun County, Virginia's only comic book store. I'm one of the proud co owners. Uh, today we had a nice event. Today was our ninth anniversary. We had 9% sale on everything in the store. We had some refreshments for people. It was really it was really nice. It was nice to meet and greet some people. So I went there and my lovely wife went with me for a little while. We hung out and uh, saw the folks, saw Rob, our principal owner, our big kahuna. And it was nice to see him and his wonderful girlfriend, Lindsay, and uh, our workers, Vince and Katie and uh, John Manuel. So it was nice. Um, enjoyed that and seeing our customers and saw a few that uh, talked about how they watch us on the Codex station. So that was kind of nice. So oh, it was, it was awesome. always good to see them. Yes, yeah, so it was good to see them. Um, so you can catch me. You can catch us there. So today was our big anniversary. Um, coming up, we have a, a huge day on Free Comic Book Day. Two weeks from uh, today um, is when we have Mr. Brendan Wayne there who will be signing his autograph, he, uh, it's it's Free Comic Book Day and it's Star Wars Day. The two have converged into one. So we have a great Star Wars guest. Uh, Mr. Brendan Wayne plays the Mandalorian when the helmet is on. That's Mr. Brendan Wayne doing the acting. Uh, he will, uh, you know, he's also supposed, supposed to take a tour here of the Library of Comics. And that's kind of cool for me because he is a he is John Wayne's grandson. And for those that know me, I am a huge John Wayne fan. He is my guy. So I love uh I love the Duke, and so to have his grandson in my in my humble abode will be royalty will be here. So it's pretty cool. And then our last event I want to tell you about is on a May May nineteenth will be our our Spring Lot Con, and that's where we turn our parking lot into a mini Comic Con. We'll have comic books and dealers. We will have um, artists with their with their artwork. We will have local authors with their books. Um, there'll be toys, all kinds of fun things for you to. Uh, Bring your family to walk around, look around. Dan brought his family. Sal brought his family for our fall lot con. So we have a spring one, a fall one. This is our spring one. So please come out and see us. We'd love to see you. Uh, if you're in the Northern Virginia area, come out and say hi. Um, the other place that you can catch us all here is um, our Comic Character of the Day site. That is a site that um, our great buddy Archduke Kevy founded. And man, he keeps adding new people. I saw this week he's got a lot of new people. Oh, I had to add one day because I'm yeah. being an admin on there. There's like yeah. 12 people requesting. I was just like approval. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that that is that is that is awesome that so many people have been joining that site. So um that is how we are all acquainted. So um Yeah, we're almost 800 members. I yeah. think we can hit it. I told them, you know, 
I told him that I think we can hit a thousand by the end of the year at the pace. I, if we keep going at the pace we're going or close to it, that we'll hit a thousand by the end of the year. If, if we go uh, to the pace we've been going this week, we'll hit it way before then. I mean, man, yeah. it's, been, it's been quite a week. So, you know, I post the cover of the day. Um, you know, you see Opie Taylor on there. That's me. I post the cover of the day. Dan posts ran the panel of the day, a question of the day. Kevin posts the character of the day. Sal's frequently a contributor. Jamie being an admin, he's ad you. If you wanna, if you wanna be on that site, he's saying yes. He is opening the gates and letting you come on board. So, uh, and like I said in the comment yeah. last time, I might not be in there all the time, but I love that place. He's always watching. Make Just sure like you go, uh, always make watching. sure you go answer the question of the day today. When I checked it earlier, there were only two answers. So it was, uh, you know, who is the worst lineup ever? Of I the couldn't day? answer because my heart wouldn't let me. Because yesterday the question was, who was the best X-Men lineup ever? Yeah, so that's what we'll be doing that. for a while because guess what? <laughs> it's really hard to come up with a different question every, every day. day, which I've been doing since I took it over from Kevin for like a year. It's hard to come up with a lot of unique questions. So I'll like find an idea for one. So now it's like, oh, the best and worst lineup. So, so far I've like done Avengers and Justice League, X-Men, the next two days, it's going to be the best and worst lineups of the Teen Titans and whatever other teams I can think of to put in there. You should do who's your favorite and least favorite Codex host. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. What's, what's going you... on, Eternal? Hey, what's up, Pat? Yeah, y'all. And uh... one of our newer members, Derek. Welcome. This is the emoji, hey, but it doesn't show the emoji on here. <laughs> but yeah. The donut one is you, Dan. The donut one? <laughs> yeah, you're eating the donut. We made an emoji out of it. Oh, yeah, I know. I haven't seen it, but I know that it exists. No, Sal did not get fired. He bought all the variants, so I told him that he couldn't, you know, be on here with all the Venoms and Carnage unless he says me some. He said no, so he's not. Oh, <laughs> it was just terrible. Terrible, Sal. Yeah. Oh, he says favored by oh, yeah. is Jamie by a long shot. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got to be. He's my godson. <laughs> okay. He so he, he's not so doing anything for Christmas or his birthday. I was gonna say he's trying to get that extra good Christmas present. Yeah, don't worry, it'll be fantastic. But what do you say, you guys, get into the show today and show off these comics? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right. So we will see all of you guys in about a minute. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another After Dark Comics Unleashed. With me, as always, we have Dan, Instagram Dan Kelly Art, and Uncle Gary, strongman of comics in the library of comics itself, and me, as usual. We're going to show you everything we picked up from our, from pools, back issues, everything else. I was on vacation, picked up a bunch of stuff, and these guys were at a con and picked up a bunch of stuff as well. Oh, yeah. So, first off, how was the con? I had a lot of fun. Con was great. Comic yeah, and we'll have a video of that too coming out here soon. Comic Logic set up there, so I was there all weekend. I uh, I got to really have some great conversations with um, Louise and Walter Simonson. Got some great, got a couple great pictures with them too. Did um, you? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll send. Why did you send me these things, man? Did Did you see the picture of the uh, Manhunter uh, sketch you made for me? I did not. I saw the you bought another copy of Swamp Thing Nine that just broke my heart because I would like to find one in the wild one day and not have Uncle Gary own every single one. I know that's a dream of yours, but not of James. I'm setting the market for him. Well, right. it's, you know what? I it let was Sal buy a copy. I let Sal buy a copy. It, yeah, he found he found a vendor that had two copies for a he, good he, price. I found Sal bought one of them, and then he I decided to buy the other one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So. uh yeah, so yeah, Adam. Adam wasn't put in the best place. He was. He was put. It. He was put in the back of the. He was put in the back of the barn there. So. Yeah, he, they got, they had him like all the way in the back. 
Yeah, you, you know, guys were like, oh, there he is. There he is. Like the lights out, and you can't see him. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure. I'm not sure if that was personal. I don't know uh, if if uh, if JD uh, was 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 punishing Adam for something. It's like so you we'll there to... and you're like, where am I? And they're like, yeah. oh, in your car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It was. Uh, yeah. It was. It was unfortunate placement there. That's for sure. But for yeah, sure. It, was, it was. It was a good time, and you know, got to talk to a lot of different vendors that we did little interviews with. Um, yep. you know, got to talk to JD who put on the show. We got to talk to Mark Nathan who puts on Baltimore and um, yep. got to, uh, you know, got to, uh, from, not gonna uh, write got, a to tease, yeah. got to tease Rob a little bit about uh, how much money he spent on candy there because yes. they had a, because they had a table that was selling fudge and another one that was selling like two foot long um, things of, was it a like two foot long Twizzlers? Yeah, like, like Twizzlers. Yeah, and like beef jerky, and yeah, <laughs> went and spent a ton of money on that. Fairfax Comic Con loves me though. They sent me up where the professional artists were. There you go. Well, that's a different con in the same building. So, yeah. yep, yep, absolutely. Right. You guys ready about to jump into these shelf? What we got this week? We're yeah, start off we with everything we got in our pools this week, and then we'll go back around for what we got uh, from the cons and what I got from vacation and on Gary Spotlight. Yes. Oh, there we go. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes, it does. Woo. Go ahead, Dan. All right. So this is what I got this week. Some of it I've read. Some of it I haven't read. Um, uh, so I got the new Superman 13. Yep. Part two of the uh, House of Brainiac story, which the first part was good. And I didn't even know. But, yeah, this is cool that it's going to be a um, connecting. Yeah. Connect with the action cover to, you know. I so, like the first part of it. I didn't read the new one yet, but I really like that first story. Yeah, I haven't read this one yet, but if they have these two connecting, there's the third part. I guess maybe they'll have that with something on this side. I don't know. We'll see. Um, because I forget which book I forget which book the third part's in. Well, it goes the uh, special, Superman and Action. Or no, the special is the special is the last part, I think. Is it? Was action first? Or no, no, the no the and I'm anyway, I'm looking at in the back. The special is part two point five that comes out oh. this month. Part three is action, part four is back to Superman, part five is action, part six is Superman. All right, so it goes back and forth. So maybe it's just the first two parts they have combining. But either way, I, I like the first issue. I'm interested to see where it goes. Me uh, too. Me even too. though on the first part of it. When it showed him showing like all these members of the Superman family, I was just like, there's too many of them. Everybody associated with Superman doesn't have to have Superman powers. Right. I got new Titans 10. This book has been one of the best DC has been putting out. I've enjoyed it a lot. Yep, me too. And, you know, the last big event they did was something that came from Titans. The next big event they're doing is being built up in Titans. Uh, the final issue of Jay Garrick, The Flash. That is good. I haven't read this one yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I've really been enjoying it so far. Same, same here. Today. What'd you say, Jamie? I said I finished off that series today, and I finished off Sandman yesterday. Nice. Like I said in the review I did of Sandman, which you could all check out on here, I thought the story was great. I just think I just don't think the art fit the story. No. I yeah. wrote you tenfold on that one. The art just... The art is fine for what it is, but for a story like that, you know, it needs something to match the tone, and the artwork just did not match the tone of it. Uh, that's it for my DCs. For indie, I got uh, Blue Book 1947, number three. That's a cool cover. What's up, Keith? Hey, what's up, Keith? I love that. That's a cool cover. Yeah. yeah. Blue, I, dude, Blue Book, wasn't Blue Book a four-issue miniseries before, and then now it's again? Well, it well first it was uh, they put it out on I think Substack, yeah, and they did all these ones on Substack, and then now they're they're putting them in print. So yeah, they did the one mini series that was based on the story of this one couple, and then now this one is based on this, um, you know this this guy from you know the story from uh, 1947. But the artwork in it's great too because it's all this black, white, and blue. Which you know, in different you know, different shades and tones of blue. So it just looks really cool the way that they do the whole story. Yeah. And then the back of each issue has like a little short 
you know, like a little black and white short story mm -hmm. in the back of each issue about some other different, like, true story, you know, unexplained phenomenon thing. And the one in the back of this issue is one of the better ones they've had. Right. And these are supposed to be true stories, which I think make it interesting. Yeah. And I like the way that they present it in the book where they don't present it as, oh, this is true or this isn't true. It's just presented as, hey, here's whatever, you know, here's what was reported. Here's right. what, here's what, ha like, here's what happened. This is what they said. It just presents it like that and lets the reader determine, you know, if it is in fact something that happened or not. Uh, Cobra Commander number four, very anxious to read this. Uh, as we see uh, Cobra Commander's bodyguard, as he he was revealed in the last issue to be Nemesis Enforcer, which I kind of figured that's who it would be anyway, so it kind of feels good to be right. Because, you know, normally when, uh, when as comic fans, we make predictions on what's going to happen, we're usually wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, but sometimes the ideas we have end up being better than what they actually do. Oh, 100%. Uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye number two. This was I did read this. This was cool. Yeah, I have that. Look forward to reading it. Yeah, it got a lot more into Natasha with the symbiote. And got the Roxon presents Thor. Yep. Which was just a big waste of time. That's what I heard. I haven't gotten into it yet, but yeah, I got it too, and I I'm not really looking forward to it. But it was they just threw it in my my list like. Well, because it kind of ties into what happened with Thor, in the Thor book. And the oh, last yeah. issue of Thor was kind of interesting. I liked it. Yes. But I don't know that it needed a Roxanne book, but I'll read it and find out for myself. See what yeah, I, I mean, it's just a way, for, really, for Marvel to get you to part with another $4. Because it uh, reading it, it, it was really just a chore to get through. It's, it's a one-note joke that could have been four to six pages in the middle of a Thor issue and gotten everything across, but instead spread it out to 19 pages in its own book. So it, it really just, that's a, that's a cash grab, yeah. baby. It, yeah. it exactly was that it was a cash grab. It was, it was a one note joke that after the second or third time you read it, you're like, okay, I get it. And then they just keep beating that drum over and over again to the, point where it's tedious and you're to the point where i was like kind of speed reading like i just got to get through this because i bought it and i'm halfway through but just this is not enjoyable at all i, re I read some of these books late at night before i go to bed and then i'm like what the hell did i just read <laughs> i mean I, I don't remember any of it so the next day i'm like did i read this and then i have to look through it and some of it's familiar and i gotta look through the damn book again yeah this one is just bad form yeah uh, this one was pretty entertaining. Spider Boy number six. I've been getting that book and liking it. Yeah. yeah, I've been I've been digging it. It's a nice, you know, it's a fun book. Uh, got this one. I did read this issue too. This is really good. Ultimate Black Panther number three. Yes, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, that was a cool issue. And then I haven't read this one yet, but this is the one I'm most looking forward to reading is uh, Avengers Twilight number. That five. has been so good. Yep. Yeah, it's good. God, it's been, it's been such a cool series. And yeah, don't tell Precious that she's reading it and she's not liking it at all. Really? Wow. What, what issue is she on? She's caught up. Aside from six, well, I no, haven't even like opened it. Came out. Five is. Yeah. Yeah. So she hasn't. She read one through four. Okay, man, I've really been digging it. But... Yeah, I haven't even read it, and she's like, "This is a waste of your time." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> like everyone's raving about it. She's like, don't do it. I was like, I'm going to read it. She was, I know you will, but I'm not liking it. <laughs> well, oh, it, could be a, it doesn't could be have to. What's up, Richard? What's up, Richard? It could be a house divided if you read it and like it and she doesn't. Oh, I can't wait to do the review. Oh, with her, yeah. Yeah. There yeah. you go. I, I, like I said, I, uh, I've really been enjoying it. You know, the, you know, especially like the, the, the one <laughs> book where they had Thor show up at the end. It's like, oh, that's badass. The way they had him show up was just badass. Yeah. So that's it for me. That's all the new stuff I got this week. All right. My turn. And I can't believe I'm actually yep. going to be able to say this, but with a new job and a new everything, new life in general, I was able to get this week's comics. <laughs> nice. There you so go. Last week's. So I'm Did you start a new job already? Um, you, as already? of Monday. Nice. So far, so good? So far, so good. Nice. Nice. So. 
first off, this is a precious find. Um, this is actually from a company we know very well, Mad Cave Studios. And it's number one of When the Blood Has Dried. Oh, that's a cool cover. Wow, look at that. The interior art looks amazing. She read about three quarters of this actually in the comic shop and was like, we're buying this, is going on our list. Thank you, Richard. Nice. All right. Next up, we have House of Slaughter number 22. Oh, I like that cover, too. Yeah, I like the detail on this one. And The Butcher's War is something I actually look forward to. I hated the series when I started it. I was about to drop it, but then I had that thing in my head where if I drop it, it's going to get good. And it got good. Next up, something epic number nine. And see, I thought that was supposed to be a mini series when it started. It was. It was only supposed to be six issues. Seven. Seven. And then it was so good that they continued it. So did they continue it to just be like a maxi series or is it an ongoing? I think it's an ongoing now. Because it was the same thing with World Tree. Yeah. But World yeah. Tree seemed to me like it had too much of a story to fit in a mini series. Whereas reading that one seemed like, all right, this seems like it is built to be, you know, a beginning, middle, and end story. Right. Well, next up, I didn't even know this was coming out, but they put it on my polls, which I'm very thankful for. But this is from Dynamite. Gargoyles Quest number one. Nice. Right. That's a cool cover. Yeah. Uh, I got from Boom Studios, Lois Lane number six. This wraps up this series. I thought you said Lois Lane. I was like, what? Lois Lane? Yeah, no. She don't look like that. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got another Boom book, The Displaced number three by Brisson. Nice. Uh, Transformers number seven. That was cool. Like that, too. Yeah, look at that. We've got... Speaking of that, have you seen the trailer for the new Transformers movie? Yes. What did you think of it? I want to see it because I have a long line of seeing it with my mom, all the Transformers movies. She was excited for it. I thought there was too much humor. Okay, that's what I thought. I saw the trailer and I was like... It felt like watching Guardians of the Galaxy with Transformers. Yeah, I was like, this this looks stupid. And these scenes where, like this end part where it looks like they have this big battle just looks like they just took the battle from Endgame and put robots in it. Yeah. Uh, but next up, another boom title, but this is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Return number three. That's groovy, man. That's a groovy yeah. cut. Yeah. So that's it for indie. We'll get into Marvel. So I got the facsimile. Oh, Gary, I'm not you. I don't have the real one. The Amazing mm -hmm. Spider-Man 254. Nice. Very nice. You'll be seeing a lot of facsimiles in my pile. <laughs> They've been doing a lot with Black. Hey, there's no, there's no reason not to. I mean, no. yeah, yeah. I was excited for like three of them. I was like, you know what? I can't. Like me and you have talked before, Uncle Gary. It's like you have it. So yep. what? Yep. But Symbiote Spider-Man twenty nine nine number two. I like that cover. Yeah, that's really neat. Uh, Incredible Hulk number eleven. I love this cover. Yeah, I like that cover too. The interior art is just oh, it's so tough to get over. He keeps listing him as a guest artist, so I hope that guest stint ends up ends soon. Yes. Well, the the story that storyline ends in that issue, so hopefully the yep. next one it's someone else. And, and it's a really good story too. Yeah, which which makes the bad art even worse. Yes. It makes you feel worse about it. Yes. All right. Next up, I got Carnage number six. That's a cool. Oh, story. that's that's vicious. Oh, I show Carnage and look who popped in the chat. No, nope, Sal. You couldn't Sal, make, like I said, Sal, like I if, you, if you're just now tuning in, Sal, Jamie told everybody that um, that he fired you and that he wasn't sure if Sal was going to make it back yet. So. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm just let, I'm just letting you know that it, it's it's been it's been rough, man. He's been maligning me. Yeah, I put the line in the sand finally. Or yeah, in the sail, in the sand, in the sail, in the sail. I the put sale. the line in the sail. The line in the sail. Yeah, line in the sail. Speaking of lines and sails, uh, well, they might be Spider-Man number forty-seven. <laughs> nice. Yep. 
you, I uh, like that guy. I was say, did you like the uh, the meme that I posted? The sound oh, yeah. meme I posted in the chat. No, I did like that. Let's see, we got what if Venom number three. I heard that there was a good uh, that there was a good scene in um, in that with Wong. With Doctor Strange asking Wong for help. Why do and- I hate you? I just <laughs> no, Sal. It's not. He does not hate you. He just loves you too much. Yeah, like that face belongs on posters for mm-hmm. wanted sign somewhere. <laughs> yep, not. Here. But uh, I, heard, I heard that the one. Post there office. Good, that there was a that there was a good scene where Strange goes to <laughs> Wong to ask him for help, and he tells him he can't because he's going to meet Madison to like watch. Real Housewives, or yeah, something. something like that. But next up, spectacular Spider-Man. Some of what he uses this Wong to get some strange. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nice. That's a cool cover. Uh, I got the same one you were talking about, Thor, Roxon one. Yeah, it just. I, I mean, I guess after reading it, going back, I don't know if <clears throat> I would still buy it because I'm reading Thor and it ties into it, but yeah. Uh, one year he showed number five. Yep, Avengers Twilight, uh, Ultimate Black Panther number three. Mm-hmm. Again, the book I keep hearing horrible things about, but I still pick it up, I haven't tried it yet. Ultimate X Men number one. I just read the second issue of that tonight. I mean, it's okay. It's just not what I buy comics for. Well, I officially put all the X Men titles on my list for the three that are coming out. So it bet those better be good. I'm just saying. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I read the second issue of Ultimate X Men and the same thing. I was like, if you know, if if you're into manga, you'll like it. But yeah, I'm not absolutely. So yeah, it's I agree. really my thing. I do like manga. I, I, totally I don't like agree. that. But uh, I'm in my DC stuff. I got Green Lantern ten. Oh, nice, nice, nice guy. Gardner. I liked it yeah. up until you noticed the gap in Guy Gardner's teeth, and for some reason, it just pissed me off. I was like, they took a great one and made it weird. I don't know. <laughs> don't know why they did that. But I got next up Action Comics 1064. Oh, that's a cool. Cover. Nice. Co- I like that cover, yeah. I really dig it. Uh, Superman number 13. Oh, yeah, that's really cool, Bermejo. Yep. Though, and he's been so killing Superman, it on Superman covers. Look, look, yes. look at the Superman cover again. Superman seems to be a little bit aroused. Just yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying he's those shorts excited. are. Yeah, he's very I excited to be up there. With cover him. for a minute. Yeah, but he's been doing some Did really great. Ridiculous cover. <laughs> yeah. A ridiculous cover. Yeah. Yep. All right. He just popped right at you. <laughs> Even though it's some really great Superman covers, and you know, after doing some really great Batman stuff too. Oh, Bermejo! Bermejo is fantastic. Yeah. Oh. oh. Go ahead. Were they better? <laughs> Probably create our own. Well, that's the thing. In Ultimate X Men, there's really only one existing character that she's yeah. been using in it. All the other ones well, are. One she made. They introduced the new character that makes me wonder if it's their version of Storm, maybe. But it so can't be if. But it can't be if Storm is in Black Panther. Well, oh, maybe you're right because this character's got silver hair and lightning bolt. Oh, you're right. right. Hey, yeah. Wes. I mean, if these are also if all these are supposed to be set in the same universe and Storm's already there. Yeah, I don't know. So, you're right. You're right. Good point. Wonder Woman number eight. I love this cover. That is cool. That is a great cover. The golden armor. Yes. Here's one that I do love as well, and this is Green Lantern War Journal number eight, too. That's good. Uh, that is great. That is cool. Uh, like you, I got J. Gary Flash number six. Yeah, that was a fun cover. Great series. I, lo- I love this that it, uh, whole series. I, it, it just actually was a fun read. Like Me too, especially because the regular Flash series has just been so lackluster. Yeah. Uh, next up, Nightwing, issue 113, but it's number 300 for Legacy. 
Yeah, oh, that's a cool cover. That that is um, was that Weeks who did that cover? Um, this is uh, Mora. 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 It's Mora. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually up for my cover of the year. So that so that is good. a yeah, it's a great cover. It's really good. Jamie, I, show that one again. Yeah. In that's, one yeah that's a that's a great looking one. Yeah. That's cool. I really like Moore's artwork. Yeah. He's been killing it. Yeah. It's too bad. Did they? Do, it's too bad they didn't do a, a blank sketch cover for for that issue because that one that Titans one you had me draw for you would have been perfect for that oh, issue. Yeah. But next up, I got Titans number ten. <clears throat> oh, that's a cool one too. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> and lastly, Red Hood the Hill number three. I like that cover. A yeah. lot better than I like the book. I'm just struggling with the book. Just yeah, I, I read Zero. And I haven't caught up to it since, but I, that's the consensus that I'm hearing from a lot of people that are Red Hood fans. They're just like, eh. Yeah, yeah. I, I am really struggling with it. Um, At the end of the last issue, something they pick makes it pick up a little, but we'll have to see where the next issue goes. But, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've not enjoyed it as much as I thought I might. All right. Well, Uncle Gary? Floor is yours. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's start off with um, let's start off with with uh, some marvelous. Let's see, what's some marvelous ones to start off with? Oh, I don't even know where they are. Where are my marvelous books? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, there He's got so many comics there. He just can't keep track of them all. You yeah. know what? And just for that, I'm just start off with one that's for Dan. <laughs> oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you for picking that up for me. Yeah. So Dan, this is this is this is Dan's uh Black Ultimate Black Panther. Uh, what is that? Second printing of two? I don't even know. I can't even keep track. Yeah, yeah, it is. I yeah. you know, like I told you guys with that and with, with some of these other printings for that and Sp Ultimate Spider Man at this point, like you know, in print, what, the seventh print? Um, yeah. And my independent I'll do my independence. I've got that's right, Comic Logic's fine. Yep, so yep. He picked them up at Comic Logic for me because my yep. shop did not order them, even though I requested them. Mm -hmm. All right. Also got Penthouse Comics. Um, how much of this cover do you want me to show, Jamie? That's good. That's good. Are you sure? No more. I had to. You don't even understand. I just sent Sonny the picture of the lick lap lick lap cover. We don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So he's like, what's comic? this lip lap lip lap comic you guys keep talking about? So I was like, let me send you the picture. <laughs> Sonny, Sonny had to leave the room and excuse himself after he saw that picture. He said he had to pee, but that was a long pee. Yeah, that was a long pee. <laughs> and when he came back, he was sweating. So I'm not sure. I'm not he sure. Did. He's like, I was watching cops. Sorry. <laughs> watching cops. Uh, you know, I know the cops doesn't come on until 530. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Black Panther ultimate for me. And you're right. That storm looks nothing like the, the girl in Peach Momoko's book. So, I kind of yeah. feel like it might be a tease to make you think one thing and it's something yeah. else. Like, remember at the end of crossover issue one when they're like, oh, they're teasing Superman. Superman's going to pop up in here. Yeah. And then it turned out to be Madman. Oh, so, yeah. Daryl said it's automatically edited out of the episode. Oh, is it? <laughs> is it really? Okay. So... Sal's got to ruin good things for people, man. Sal, had you been here, we'd have shown it. But you know, yeah. we, we, we got we, to see it before the show started. Yes, you did. You did. Um, Ghost Rider, Final Vengeance. How is yeah. that? That's I a cool know. cover. Um, it was only been one issue that I've read, and it was interesting. We'll see. But um, you know, I I don't know why we're creating a new Ghost Rider, but we'll see. Um, okay. Uh, but you know, I read. Giant Size Hulk. These giant size issues are so much fun because it was 50 years ago that Marvel was, you know, when DC was in its 100 page phase, Marvel had its giant size books. So we're celebrating that with the giant size books that are coming out. So, you know, again, now, I didn't pick that one up. Have you read it yet? No, I, I have not read. I, I haven't even looked through it. Because I know it's Daniel Warren Johnson that wrote it, so I wasn't sure yeah. how closely it tied into the All right, well, series. just talk amongst yourself. I'll read it, and I'll tell you how it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's another show. Okay. He just looks um, through. He's like, done. Yeah, the, dead well, X-Men. character from SNL that used to do that? Linda, um, 
the Mike Myers one that he did. Oh, like, Linda, Linda, Linda talk, Richmond. Talk, yeah, talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves, Linda Richmond. Dead X Men. Um, you know, I, I'm enjoying it just because Cannonball's in it. I hope, I hope this is a good issue for him. Um, X Men Four was this Rise and Fall, Fall of the House of X number four. It's Jamie's be, favorite character. I know. Well, that, if probably, he's as cool as he was in, in X Men '97, yes, I'll read it. Yeah, everybody's asking me about that. I said I don't have Disney Plus. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, I will give you my login info. You listen. Have to watch. I'm. I will buy a DVD when it comes out. So. I will tell your wife. Here's my login oh, info. Put it on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you got to at least watch Mandalorian before Brendan Wayne. Goes. I don't know that I'm going to have time, dude. That's two weeks, and I got work to do around here. Black Widow and Hawkeye, you know. I've got to make the, the library of comics look uh, up to snuff. I've been doing library work this yeah. weekend. Wow. So I was off Friday because I, I had the con Nolan Camp concert, and I got back late, um, you know, near midnight. Um, so I didn't, I didn't work. I took the day off on Friday, spent time doing library mm -hmm. stuff today. I spent time doing library stuff and I'll finish it tomorrow. So I got work to do before I have royalty here. <laughs> Spectacular Spider-Man like you, you had, um, Avengers Twilight. we we'll look forward to reading that. Um, I also have enjoyed Spider-Boy so far. It's just fun. You know, it's, it's got yeah. that, you know, it's just sometimes comics can be fun. So that's what that yeah, is. I mean, Dan Slott's a fun writer. Yeah. Rocky Medina's like, you know, a fun, energetic penciler. Yeah. And uh, another book that's more adult fun is Predator Wolverine Trade. Yes, that was that was a fun book. Yep. So this is a book. That was a gory fun book. Yeah, like I said, I have the originals, but I like to have trades of the ones that I like because this is an easier way to read them and access them. So You know what also, I did pick up the other probably two weeks ago, so I was on the show? for it uh stray dogs i read that in one sitting that was a blast of a read yeah i have not who who wrote that was that king no that's tom uh place oh i'm i'm conflating that with dog pound yep yep um yeah fleeks and right I, I remember i have not read that yet yep trades there you go adam knows yeah all right yeah. Wonder Man, Simon Williams, another Ooh. trade. It's collecting, um, what does it collect? Uh, it kicks Avengers 9, his first appearance, 152 and 153 when he's resurrected. Wonder Man 1, uh, Tales of the Marvels, Wonder, the Wonder Years 1 and 2. That was a really good series. Um, Avengers 2, Wonder Man and the Beast. Wonder Man and the Beast, Sal. Wonder Man and the Beast. Oh, yeah, that's right. They were great friends because they were Avengers. Yeah, that's right, Sal. You, you didn't know that. Um, Avengers Annual 6 and then Wonder Man 1 through 5. So, anyway, it's got good. You know, look, there's Beast. He's an Avenger. How about that? Anyway, so nice Wonder Man trade. Um, I'm surprised it took you this long to get it because we saw me and Sal saw it in the shop like two weeks ago. It's and been, I in, my box. Went, it's and been I in my box. Okay, I was like, I saw it. I said, look at the shelf there and tell me which book it is guaranteed that Gary gets. And he was like, okay. oh, so, yeah, Wonder Man. It came out right after the big volume is. I try to space the Wonder Man books out a little too because I want to show them where I can I can talk crap to Sal about it. Oh, look, it's Wonder Man, but Sal Sal didn't even have the decency to show up. You know, after after our Wonder Man, our you know for for those that want a little extra here, go to uh, to a special status where you can see our top ten, our new top ten show, and Sal and I had the top ten reasons why Wonder Man is an Avenger, and Sal gave some feeble arguments about why the Beast is an X-Man, and you can see that show, and he is happy. He is happy. Richard, thank you. That is the point I made to Sal yeah. all the time. He is a miserable blue bastard when he's with the X-Men, but when he's with the Avengers, he is fun. He's a ball of joy. He is a babe magnet. Oh, my God, yes. You are 100% right. So who, who was it we talked to? At, uh, which vendor was it we Tom talked Chilini. to? Tom and yeah, when he was yes. like, it's, they're two different characters. Yeah, well, it is. It is. And, that, and, and Sal and I also discussed that. But if you want that extra contact, you didn't win that show. Let the <laughs> public decide. You know what? The facts, when those cold, hard facts are out there, Sal may win that. But when it's emotion and it's fun and it's a good time, and he is buried. So, 
you, you all have to be the judge for that when you see the show. All right, moving on, moving on to DC. I also got the Nightwing variant cover. I love that cover. That is that that, cool. that, that, that is a great cover. I also got another variant by a fellow named Jim Lee. Yeah, that's cool. so that's one of the Jim Lee variants for this week. Sound speechless. Oh, there, never mind. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Nightwing. The regular and if cover. you look, if you look on his um, Twitter, no, no, you're animated. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Look at all that. You are you are right about that muscle I'm packing. Thank you for noticing. If you if you look on his um, on his Twitter for that Nightwing cover, the DC did like a thing where they animated it so you could see Nightwing like running across the cover of it. It was really cool. All right. Again, we talk about sometimes comics are allowed to be fun. Mark Wade. Uh, world finest knows how to draw fun, have fun. Yeah, beware out of the way, beware beloved DC icons coming through. Mitzelpick and Batmite. Uh oh, is right. Uh oh, this is gotta be fun. Gotta be fun. <laughs> All those Avengers books with beasts on the covers. Thank you, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> And Uncle Gary will just improve his point. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I approve. Richard, I love you, baby. Checks in the mail. Um, so, World's Finest Alternate Cover. That's great. I like that. Okay. Now, Dan, sometimes you don't like it when they put certain characters on World's Finest. Do you think this makes sense for Aquaman to be part of World's Finest Cover? Yeah, it looks it looks fantastic. Well, no, I mean, you know how sometimes where, like with the Marvel covers where they had the George Oh, Brothers, yeah. Why was it on that cover? This actually makes sense because Aquaman was a backup in World's Finest for a while. Yes. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. And that's a great Jim Lee Aquaman cover. Very happy to have it. Um, also got the last thing, uh, Ash Flash and the Boom. Looking forward to that. Um, I think this book has been delayed. It seems like it took a while for the next issue of Batman Offworld to come in. So that's been a very interesting book. Which issue is that? That's number four. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it. I think I'm going to have to pick it up. I've been hearing good things about it. <laughs> Come on, Rich. Throw me a bone. Sal, I got a bone for you. Don't worry about it. All right, here we go. Oh. oh. And this, now, this is for you, Sal. This is foily goodness. Nice. This is, this is a crisis foily goodness for you and your honor, Sal. So there we go. One of the greatest covers of all time, Mr. George Perez. Here's I debated on getting the the blank sketch cover for that, but I was like, "What am I gonna?" I was like, "You'd have to draw a million characters like, to do Perez justice on that." Yeah, I was like, "What am I gonna draw on yeah. this?" It's, you know. Yeah. So the great Superman um, cover that ties in with the action. So the last of the Jim Lee covers this week, Bizarro. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, so get some Bizarro. I gotta confess, I. I'm not a Bizarro fan. I find nor am I. I, I don't I. really like reading, you know, books that Bizarro shows up in. It's just it gets a little tedious, you know. Me to and love Bizarro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what that means, right? Yeah. yeah. I like the uh, I like the 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 thing that Kevin posted in the character of the day page. The 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 text conversation between Batman and Superman, where Superman's like, "Oh, you know that." Bizarro hooked up with Solomon Grundy. He's like, I'm monitoring it. He's like, what are they doing? He's like, well, they're just sitting in a warehouse and Bizarro just keeps saying, in time to go. And Grundy says, okay. And then just sits there. Or no, in time to stay. And Grundy says, okay. And then just sits there and they don't go. And that's all they've done. Superman goes, wow, that's better. That, that's a better prison than Arkham. And Batman says, everything is a better prison than Arkham. Nice. Here's a new war journal. Very good. Yeah, I like that. Um, Titans again, and and damn Waller, Waller's going for me being a government pain in the ass to freaking evil as hell. Jeez, yeah, man. Waller um, went from being a character that was like, all right, you know, I she's unlikable, but you can at least see that she's trying to do some good. Yeah. To now, just like no, she's just straight up a villain now. Yeah, she's straight up villain. She went total Max Lord. All yeah. right, here's Catwoman, Nine Lives. Um, I think it's a bit of a goofy storyline, but I'm still in. Uh, though the alternate cover, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, the war journal cover was pretty cool there, Sal. Um, 
Wonder Woman, and I've liked this book so far. Oh, is that a bondage cover? It is a bondage cover. Can't have a good Wonder Woman cover if there's no bondage. So, <laughs> you know, there we go. And uh, really cool Hellblazer cover. Nice. Yeah. This book, as much as I like Hellblazer, this has been a really dense read. You know, it's not as, you know, it's not as streamlined as, as a lot of them. Uh, so, Comic Logic today, I went there and I got a few, I got a few um, things today. I got a Justice League Last Ride trade of the mini that I kind of enjoyed. Had a Lobo, you know, when you know, come on, have your have your Justice Leaguer sitting around a little campfire on a far off planet and under the looming image of dark side cool and there's a there's some lobo action in here so that's good and then for some reason i didn't um get oh baltimore and there we go turn lights um justice league uh 70 i mean this is the that could this finished that last volume of justice league except for oh, yeah, that, with uh black adam on the team yeah with black adam on the team i didn't for some reason, I just missed this. It goes to issue 74. So 75 has not been collected yet. But I needed that, so I got that. And then just for fun, just for fun, got a Man-Thing lunchbox. I had one before, but my good buddy, Mr. Mike Barber, liked it, my best friend. So he ended up getting it for a um, Christmas present. So when we were able to order more, I got right. more in the – Really, maybe the piece de resistance on it is the thermos with the man thing on it. Man thing doing what he does best, slinging gators. Isn't that true? <laughs> slinging gators. Yep, got a hold of them. So there do you, you have go. a swamp thing lunchbox you can display that beside? I do not. They have not made a swamp thing lunchbox, um, sadly. But, gotcha. you know. So, but I do have a man for the lunchbox, and so does Mike now. Or Mike. Well, now. no, you can take a picture and send it to Brandon and be like, "Hey, I'm a collector." Oh, oh yeah, Brandon. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say Brandon would like that. Something yeah. you don't have. He might, he, he, you know, he might have it. It came out last year, the first time, so he may have that. So that's it for new books for me. All right. Well then, Dan, show us what you got from the con. And All right, so I got. So I got a few things here. I've got um, I got a couple sketch covers that I did that I sent to TGC uh, that I got back. I got uh, the stuff I got at the con, and then um, Codex's own Wes Rebel Scum sent me something in the mail. I have no idea what it is. He just said I'm going to send you something. It came the other day, and I said, "All right, I'll I'll wait till the show and open." Is it, it up. ticking? Is it ticking? Is it ticking? <laughs> uh, if it was, it, it probably would have blown up already. So I'll All show right. off the two books that I got from uh, the CGC, the sketch covers I did. The first one I, I already showed Gary because it was it's his. It's the Swamp Thing sketch Mine. cover for him for Christmas, and just got that back. Yep. With my Look at that uh, beautiful nine four, and that, TV ladies and table. gentlemen, that is a one of a kind item. Thank you, there, yeah. Dan Kelly. That's what you're you're welcome. You be, yeah, so whenever the next wonderful. time is that we that we get together, I'll be bringing that with me. And then this other one that I did <clears throat> is a Spawn sketch cover that I did for the Spawn issue one. Uh, so I got this one graded as well. Ah, oh, that's so cool! Look at that. Thank you. So as you can there see, you with my yeah, yeah, my name on there, which I still think is. It's pretty cool, yeah. Um, it is cool. So you could check my Instagram. I posted the pic on this about a week ago. And, yes, it is available for purchase if anybody would like it. And when we have our table at Baltimore Comic Con, if I still have it at that point, then I will be – then I'll have it there for sale. Now, this is what I got – well, let me cover up, hey, cover up the – All right. This is what I got from – Wes, so again, I I don't know what this is. He just messaged me. Well, it was just day. a photo of him flipping you off when you open it. <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be fucking hysterical. Or, or frame you know eight by ten of him with his disappointed look. Yeah. Oh, that would be funny too. No, it was when we were doing. 
whatever show it was we were doing when we were all on, he was on it too, and and he messaged me. He's like, "Hey, what uh, what's your address?" A couple of years ago, my my I found an old um, celebrity photo that my daughter had sent away for when my my oldest had sent away for when she was in elementary school, and she got an autographed photo of somebody, and I found it again, and I gave it to her for Christmas, and she opened it, and it was her old. Eight, old autographed eight by ten of Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, "Oh my god, I forgot all about this." So that was great. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got, we did. We're getting the. Uh, I actually started filling the paperwork out at Turn Nights. We are, um, we are getting a table in Artist Alley. So the plan is, I'll, you know, I have my artwork and stuff to sell, and then we'll have some, you know, some Codex stuff to give out, and you know, try and get some. Um, you know, get generate some more followers. Yeah. yeah. Well, all and most of us will be there. I'll be there for sure. Uh, Precious, Uncle Gary, Sal, obviously Dan, uh, Tim. So we'll all be at the booth at some point. Probably won't be there forever. I'll try to stay as long as possible, obviously. But yeah. So I'll, we're going to zoom in and out. We can figure it all. Hey, so this is what Wes sent. Oh, thank you, Wes. This is awesome. Oh, um, that's nice. So you know what it was? It's because he, when he was doing one of his unboxing videos, I messaged him and I was like, hey, man, you know, that was a cool unboxing one. He's like, oh, I got this other stuff I haven't shown yet. And he like showed me all these pictures of it. And he was trying to decide, you know, like what he was going to send to CGC, what he wasn't going to, like what he was going to keep and sell. And he had a few copies of this and the silver one. You know, and that's when he got the gold gambit one too, which is super cool. And I had told him, I was like, Yeah, I remember when those books came out when I was a kid. Correct. But, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember telling him, like, I remember when that book came out when I was a kid and how it was super hot. And I remember the gold and the silver covers, you know, and at the time they were, you know, on the pricier side. And I was like, You know, as a, uh, you know, as a, as a, 12 year old kid or whatever however old i was when i was a uh, thank you so i really appreciate it. i'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to well, email was, for you that was really cool wes Good yeah job. that was super cool because yeah when i was a uh when i was like a uh i'll be there next year buddy once well, we're yeah. we're gonna get in the table too sunny will be there this year right yeah so he has to get good footage though <laughs> But I was, uh, yeah, I was telling him, I was like, you know, I was like a 12 year old kid or however old I was, you know, when you're going to the comic shop with your allowance, like, yeah, I didn't have the money for that. So this is awesome. Thank you so much, man. This is, this is super cool. Still in the comic book, too. That's awesome. I was it thinking hurt. about sending some, some Spider Man. the thing dreams are made of, and we yeah. help each other out. I was thinking about sending some Spidey books to get, to get graded. So, that might have to go with it to, you know, just have a big Spider-Man thing. It's wrapped for your protection. <laughs> anyway, so this is the stuff I got at the con. The first book here I I already had, but I took it with me, and I got uh, Walter Simonson's autograph on the bottom here. Oh, awesome. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a good, you know, you can see it's, you know, it's uh, the copy is kind of beat up. Um, when I pulled it out of the box, it was a little more beat up than I remembered, but it was ten bucks to get his autograph, and they don't keep the money. They um, they uh, donate it to um, which charity is it? It's the um, comic comic relief or something. Did so the Sal the sales message just say he bagged Polly goodness? Yes, <laughs> that's what I thought. Oh, my bad, my dyslexia. I know I had the same problem. Yep. <laughs> but you know what? Now I've got. You know, and now I got Simon's autog Simonson's autograph, which is one mm -hmm. of the coolest autographs in comics. It is. It is. Uh, I'm moving on. Show I, sh I showed the Manhunter picture he drew for me. Oh, so good. Yeah. Uh, I'll move on to some books I got. I got this one. Um, I think I paid like a buck for it. I just, you know, I might have gotten it as a free book with some other stuff just because, I mean, who doesn't like milk and cheese? <laughs> Milk if, you've and cheese. Read, if you've never read Milk and Cheese, I highly recommend it. It is laugh out loud funny, and it is offensive in every way, unapologetically offensive and stupid 
stupid, ridiculous violence, and it's just hysterical. And I highly recommend it. Uh, these three books I got at uh, the last, these were the last ones I bought at the convention um, I got from Comic Logic. So I got this Green Lantern number, was it 19? 19. Yeah. I have a copy of that book signed by Martin Nodell. Wow. Who's the creator of Green Lantern. So I have this copy signed by no one. Yeah. That, but but I'm glad it, to have it's a cool cover. It, Great it, cocaine. Is. it is. Great it's cocaine. Awesome. Jamie, I just sent you a picture. Buddy. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't that a good picture? Yeah. That is. What'd you send him a me picture? And the of? Simonson. Oh. Me and the Simonson. Okay, yeah, I, I remember you sending that. Uh, I got this just because, for whatever reason, I don't know what happened to my copy. Is uh, Amazing Spider-Man three eighty eight? <clears throat> it's foily too. Foily goodness. Yeah. That's his parents on there, right? Yeah. Uh, and then this one, just because I like the old pulp characters, uh, the DC, the Shadow number one. Badass. Nice. Kaluta cover. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Good Mike Kaluta cover. And it, you know, I kind of dig that it's got this. Um, you know, this like date stamp there too. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. And that doesn't take away from the value either. Yep. Uh, I forget which vendor I picked this up at, but, you know, as I'm working on completing my Invaders run, this is a really nice copy of issue 38. So there's one more to cross off my list. Fake. Yeah. The, those are the fake parents one. Fake parents. That's yeah, Spidey. But yeah, unfortunately, where it is with Invaders, like, it's not any of the big price books from the series that I need, but all the ones I need are like 10, 15, 20 bucks. So it's not like you, it's going to be easy to pick up. A, did you, know, did you check Cellini's Invaders to see what he had? Because he had that collection where he had pretty good um, runs of some of those Marvel books. Yeah, he did. I just kind of wanted to, you know, since I didn't have a ton of money, okay. I just wanted to kind of spread it out okay. to a few different things. In fact, I think these next two books, I think I got from him um, a second print of New Warriors number one. Just because I thought it would be cool for when Marvel had that short period of time, like a year or two, where they did all these second prints with these, where they just made the backgrounds of them gold. I was like, you know what? There's not a whole lot of them, and they're, you know, and most of them are not expensive. So, and they're all for books that I already am working on runs of anyway. So I might as well just get them so that's one crossed off and this one as well uh the second for new mutants 87 nice uh so now i am three books away from complete new mutants run i need 98 and i need the second and third printing of 100 well one is harder than the other two yeah yeah one is going to be a bit tougher to get than the other ones uh this was one i've been wanting to get for a while and i you know found that the guy had a good price on it so i had to pick it up which is ride number zero yes i see that first, everywhere yes first bloodshot and uh yeah you know most of those old valiant books don't have a lot of value anymore even the ones that once did but this is one mm -hmm. that has consistently held its value uh and the next four are all first appearance ones that i got this one, the um, X-Men Annual number 14. X-Men Annual 11. First Gambit. Yep, the first Gambit. First Gambit. I, like, I, like how the, um, I like how the dealer actually had it labeled as the first Gambit because I guess, you know, you could make this a, uh, you could make this a argument like the Hulk 180 or 181. This is the first appearance of Gambit. It's not X Men two sixty six. Gambit shows up for like eight pages in this. He is referred to by name. He has many lines of dialogue. He interacts with many characters. It shows him in his costume and in an X Men costume. And it came out three weeks before two sixty six. You got that from the same person that um that Sal and I got the Swamp Things from from After Time Comics. Yeah. And then I got home and I realized I already had it. But this is a nice... Wow. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, you upgraded at least. Yeah. So this is a nicer copy. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a nicer copy than the one I had. So the one I had, I guess I'll move to the stack of stuff to, you know, to try and find new homes for. But... Well, I'll, yeah. I got a home right here if you're looking. Well, like mm -hmm. I said, 
in every definition of a character's first appearance, this is it. Yep. So, you know, just because CGC has decided that 266 is the first appearance, like, what well, it was supposed to be. It doesn't matter what it was supposed to be. This came out three weeks before. It's not like it was, you know, you know, just one week. It was three weeks before. Hi, Pam. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Pam. So I just got Hello, three Pam. more left. I got two raw books and a slab, but they're all pretty cool ones, I think. I got um, Fantastic Four 35, first appearance of Dragon Man. Nice. Is a pretty nice. It's got this tear in the cover here, but <clears throat> honestly, I didn't, wrong with that. Yeah, I yep. honestly didn't even notice it at first when I was looking at it. And you know, the rest of the covers, you of know, course, he is you know, yeah, it's 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 and it presents well, yeah. And you know what? It's it's Fantastic 435. That's so, yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, the only way I'm gonna get these books you know short of winning the lottery is to get ones that have some damage to them but i'm okay with that yeah because like i said i'm gonna show you guys something that they got damage but i own them now so i don't care yeah exactly like i would rather have it in my collection and have it not be pristine than not have it and hold out for a pristine and uncle gary says it's an upgradable copy (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely and then the same spot i got that i also got this X Men number nineteen, the first appearance of Mimic. Yep. Hey so, TJ, good to see you, buddy. Yeah. So that's another one I was really psyched to get. Now the damage on this one is that it's a you know the cover is detached, but the cover mm-hmm. and the back cover are not loose. They're the cover and the back cover are still are still one sheet. They're just detached from the staples of this. But you know, other than that, you know, yeah, I mean, there's you know, it's not a perfect one but it's pretty nice looking copy otherwise so and it's now the oldest issue of x-men and the oldest issue of fantastic four that i have well and done then, yeah I, I was pretty i'm pretty psyched to get them you know it's it's classic books it's first appearances too you know uh and then another first appearance i got uh, it's a slab i got it's a book i've been wanting to pick up for a while and i found a, a good price on it it is Incredible Hulk issue 234, uh, CGC 8.5. It is the first appearance of Quasar. Ooh, wow. Did you, you got that at the show? Nice. Yeah, I got it for 35 bucks. Nice. Which, if I bought this book raw, it would cost me about that much to send it or more to send it in to get graded myself. So and that's the first Quasar. Yeah, well, the first the first appearance of him was in an issue of Captain America, which I also have when he was okay. called Marvel Man, and it was like him and Texas or Marvel Man. Boy, or it might have been Marvel Boy, yeah, yeah, um, Marvel Boy or Marvel Man, but it was like him and Texas Twister and one or two mm-hmm. other characters that, that appeared mm-hmm. in that, and um, and uh, oldest issue of what <laughs> for now, Sal? Yeah, for, well, no, he's meaning you'll go back. You know the oldest issues you have of X Men and right FF. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll always try and find deals on them. But yeah, his first appearance was in the Captain America book, and then in this book he appears where he officially becomes mm-hmm. Quasar. So it's one that I'm, you know, and it's an eight point five, so it's a good grade. It yeah. looks really nice, and um. Yeah, it's one that I've been wanting to get for a while, especially since I had the Captain America one. And then I didn't even realize that as a bonus, it was released the month and year I was born, April 1979. Wow. So, yeah, so that's uh, that was my haul from from the convention. Not a uh, not a ton of stuff, but I'm pretty happy with it. This was the first time in a long time. That I went to a convention and I really went for quality over quantity. Right. Just saying, oh, I'm just going to walk out, you know, you know, I'm going to dig through dollar bins and you know spend a hundred dollars and walk out with a hundred and twenty dollar books. So I was like, I'm going to get, you know, going to get some, you know, some little more valuable books. And I got well. everything. Everything I got, I got a deal on, except for the the slab book. I paid what he had marked for it, but again. It was it was thirty five bucks for a first appearance, that's you know that's graded. So, 
And an eight five too. Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty happy with pretty happy yep. with that. You did well. And now I'm very anxious to see what Jamie got. Oh God. Yeah, I have about a short box. So we went on vacation uh for my birthday and a bunch of other reasons, but I want to go show precious like my old comic shops where I used to go. So just a quick shout out to Graham Cracker Comics in Plainfield, uh, Amazing Fantasy in Lockport, Illinois, and also Tinley, Illinois. They had two different locations. Oh, Graham then, Cracker sets up in Baltimore, by the way. Yeah. yeah Jay, uh, Jamie from Graham Cracker. I think his name's Jamie too. He's a he's a he's a big wig there that everybody knows, man. Yeah, they, there's there's a lot of Graham Cracker comics. Everywhere, but I, and then lastly, I bought my Wiz comics last year from Graham Crackers. Did you? Mm-hmm. All right, I, I I can't wait to see. So, and then lastly, it was Half Price Books in Orland Park. They those guys, every one of them, been amazing. But I really do got to give a shout out to the guy. Didn't get his name, unfortunately. We were too busy talking and swapping stories. Uh, he threw on Codex on the TV in the shop too. Nice. Um, which was really cool, but there was a comic that caught my eye right when we were checking out, and I was like, oh, it's a little bit too rich for my blood. He goes, dude, with everything that you're buying, everything we talked about, he's like, give me a second. He goes, I just got a guy sell me a collection. Pulls this out, and my heart stopped, and I had to buy it. All right. First Doomsday. Wow. Nice. Yeah. The guy gave me a deal on it. I was so happy. (laughs) That's a great cover, too. Yeah. yeah. So these are a little beat up, but I found these at Graham Cracker in Plainfield. And it is, this one's uh, Green Lantern, 53. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool cover. Classic Gil Kane cover. Yep. And then. What's your oldest Green Lantern? Is that one of them? That would be, no, 37. You have 37. Okay. And then. From Amazing Fantasy in Lockport, 63. Yep, I've always oh, thought that cool. was a cool cover. Yep. <clears throat> All right, what do we got here next? That was another right, so good. The, this was a fact simile that I was talking about earlier, and I had to get it. Precious is a huge Deadpool fan. So we got the New Mutants, 98. Nice. Yeah. There's a foil version of that you can get, too. Online. Yeah. Well, she substituted that foil for this foil that she found when I was buying the Doomsday one. So this is number one, Avengers of Moon Knight. Oh, that's really cool. That's I like nice. it. And then I had to get the one for my favorite Disney movie of all time, foil version of Hercules. Hercules, Hercules. Nice. Reminds me of Uncle Gary when he flexes. That's right, baby. Mm. Aren't they doing a new Hercules series or something? They were talking about it. I don't know how much went through. I saw um, I mean, a comic for it. I, I thought I saw something for an, a new comic or something that's going to be on Kickstarter or, or something. Yeah, like I don't that, know. At least. So some of these two are pickups from last week and the week before yeah. as well. So they'll be mixed in here. But uh, I got Tony Fleece's Uncanny Valley number one. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. Which I always heard it was like, who framed Roger Rabbit kind of? Yeah, kind of. Um, it was like a a mix of quote unquote real and cartoons. But yeah, the first issue was really cool. Yeah, uh, one we needed to almost finish off the collection is uh, Guma, a new beginning number three. This is the variant because this is the only thing I can find. Oh, that's... which is Precious loves it. I gotta read it. So, um, our bones dust number two. That's an interesting cover. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. She's reading it. I'll be reading it here soon after she's done because she'll yell at me. We got to do a review. <laughs> uh, and I actually found the last copy of it was Feral number one, the first print. Nice. So I was very happy finding that. I grabbed, I snagged that too. I walked through again. And I was like, it's the first print. I'm like, and it was the last one. Always amazing moments. <laughs> All right, Uncle Gary. So you got me in a bit of a pickle here. Um, All right. She watches the episodes, so she heard that you like the penguin, so we had to go and go get every issue. Oh, okay. And Very have to good. Three different stores in order to find him. Did you get them all? Yep. 
That's a cool cover. Any, has she started reading them yet? Yes. And what is her so far? She is loving it. Oh, good. I'm glad I could help. I'm yeah, glad she, I could help. I'm so glad he said this was good. She goes, I wouldn't have known. Yep. Oh, he said something. It, 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 it's been, <laughs> it really has been good. So good. I'm happy. Oh, that's a cool cover. And she's yeah. gotten some of the variants I didn't even get. But uh, yeah, this is Tom King writing it. So um, yeah, that's why I, I, I think I want this would deter me from it because I've been not liking Tom King's writing. Uh, Look, Tom maybe. King is hit and miss when he, when he, when, you know, sometimes I get it, but other times he hits it out of the park like he's doing with this. Yeah. She says it. She's yeah. read the first couple of issues. She says it's amazing. Yeah. It's really good. I love that cover. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good All one. All right. And then. I found three to complete a new 52 run I needed, which was Resurrection Man. Nice. So I got 10. I enjoyed that. I have the run before the new 52, and then I have that run, too. I, I enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Landing 11. and Abnet, I think. And 12. Yeah. Yeah, because that, yeah. that series didn't last long on a new 52. No, that was, it was a 12. Yeah. So and before really that, it was like a 20 something issue series before the new 52 yeah. when they first introduced them. But kind of an interesting character. Yeah. yeah. So I knocked on another new 52 run while I was there as well. And that was the 13 issues of Batman Incorporated by Grant ah, Morrison. That was a there cool book. So I'll fly through these real fast. Yeah. Well, and I know you talk nothing but good about this series too as well there when we had the conversation before yep absolutely because yeah, there was a, the batman incorporated book before new 52 and then i love matches know, malone yeah, yeah. and then when everything got canceled they did the new 52 one and then just recently they had the Good the cover. other work the other one of it they did it again where they had uh where they had ghost hunter um running the team yes i've seen that one that one was really good too. Well, that was good too with all the jokers around the world. I like that. Yeah. Are you laughing? I was when that one ended. ended. Yeah. Oh, that's good too. That's a good cover. Oh, yeah. That yeah, that was yeah, that was sad where Damien Yeah Damien we're... Damien stopped breathing. Yeah. That's a great cover. Yeah. Yeah, where Damien got killed that I mean, yeah. how, long did, yeah. how long did that death last? It wasn't long. No, it wasn't. Because at the end of Batman and Robin from New 52, he Lazarus got Pit. Yeah. yeah. Now, it, it, was it the Hellfire suit? Yep. And he had, and Damien had superpowers for a little bit when he was resurrected. Yeah. Yep. Love the cover. And then the last one for this one. Yeah, that's a great cover, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I got two New 52 series that I got knocked out, which I was very, very happy with. And then I picked up this series, which I didn't even know was a thing until I saw it, and I had to grab it because it was, I think it was like 10 bucks for all four. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. yeah well cool. worth it. Well yeah. worth it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a fun, that was a fun mini series. What caught my eye was issue two. Yes. Yeah. That's your that that was That's the first, Andrew. and that yeah. was the first black at the first new Black Adam story in a long time. Yeah, I love that the whole you lose and you just standing mm -hmm. over him. Yeah, found that and I was like, you know what, I need it. Yeah, easy to complete. Yeah, four issues. Four issues. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, like I got a lot of good stuff while I was there. So I was very happy. We we found a lot of good. All right. Uh, next up are some facsimiles for Marvel Superhero Secret Wars. Uh, I already had issue one, so I got issue two. Pick up issue three. And then issue four. I like that cover. Yeah. So got those out in the way because that's I love going back and reading those, especially. And, like, I've talked to Gary many times about just because it's a facsimile, you have it now. So, anyone out there doesn't think that collecting this is not a good thing, it is. 
it is, and you have a copy with the ads in it and everything else in it. Yeah. Just like it. So there's nothing wrong with that. So I did work on some uh, of my collecting goal for New 52 this year. Uh, I got Batgirl 34. Oh, I like oh, that cover. Cool. Nice. Uh, 41. Oh, yeah, that's when they – that's when Gordon became Batman for a while. Yeah, yeah when he's in the robot suit, yeah. He's in Rook. The armor. 42. Live wire. 43. I like what they're doing with Livewire and Superman now, too. Yeah. And 44. Nice. Get that one, that one. All right. So all of these are annuals that I needed. So from New 52 Batman. Detective. Oh, no, this is actually 36. Issue 36 of Detective. Oh, great cover. Yeah, that's a good one. And then here's uh, the annual number three from it. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a really cool one, too. Uh, annual number one. Nice. Yeah. This is, I think this was the pet uh, from Rebirth. The annual, or right after Rebirth, number three. Uh, look at that. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> this one's from the DC Universe line. This is the annual number one for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that was a really good. That was a really, I love that run of Detective that had, um, you know, they had like Batwoman and Clayface. And, yeah. You know, that was uh, Tomasi, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. No, it was um, Tinian. Tinian, yeah. Tinian. Tomasi had the other title, had Detective. Yeah. Uh, later yeah, yeah. on. But later yeah, that, on, yeah, that uh, that run he did on Detective there on, for Rebirth, I just, every month I was always looking forward to reading it. I love what they did with Clayface and with Clayface yeah. and, with, um, and with Cassandra. Mm-hmm. And it's a shame that they just kind of, you know, reverted them back to status quo after that. Right. Yeah. I agree. Right, and then we have from 2009 Detective number annual number 11. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the second part of a two parter. Yeah. Yeah. And there's connecting cover. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then next up. So this is, this is where we get a little bit into the beef. These are all the detective issues that we did get. A um, couple she found, some I found. But you got the facsimile for 38. First Robin. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, the facsimile for 58, which is first penguin. Oh, yep. that's cool. And then here's two that Uncle Gary, this is, these, I already showed you the photo. So this one is yep. 316. Yep. Look at that early 60s goodness. Dr. Double Z. Yeah. Well, center. Mm-hmm. And then first Adams, which is 370. That's yep, look at that. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely. Nice. So those are there. And then we got 569 or five or 659. Oh, uh, Kelly. Yeah, that's so good. We got 660. Yeah, look at that, Keith. Get a little stack here. Oh. Got 703. Oh, I love that cover. Yeah. Good number 754. Yeah, very cool. 756. That's a really cool cover. Yeah, I like that a lot too. 757. Yep, I love the logo on this, the detective and the Batman. Yeah. I just think it's so cool, so classy. Yeah. 758. Oh, that's a really great cover. Seven fifty-nine. 
760. Yeah, Mad Hatter, nice. Yeah, this is a good a good series of covers here. Yep. And then it jumps to 848. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that was a pretty good run on it, too. Yeah, with the rest in peace line. Yeah. Now we jump into Rebirth, so it's, it's 934. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's I like that. Over, yeah, yeah I, like I said, that I love that run, and the stuff they did with Tim in there too was really cool. Nine thirty-five. Nice, that's so good. Nine thirty-six. Nice. Thirty-seven. Mm-hmm. Look at that. 38. Yeah. All these covers are just excellent. And the condition on these are really nice, too. Yeah. 940. Oh, that's all um, right. Yeah, it's making me wanting to pull those ones out and, and reread that storyline. 950. Oh, that's yeah. an excellent cover. There is one issue, though, okay, that Precious bought because of you. That I It made me laugh. She's like, we're buying this. I went, why? She was Uncle Gary. That's all I'm going to say. And she showed me. I was like, fine. Is that one of the detectives? It's one of the detectives. Okay. 51. I like it. Yeah. 952. Yeah, so good. 50, all right, 959. Oh, uh, with Satana, yep. 961. Yep, yeah. that was a two-parter, yeah. yeah. It's always good seeing, you know, I always like seeing Batman Satana team-ups. Mm-hmm. No, Pam, I'm, we're, I'm moving backwards in time <laughs> as much mm-hmm. as I can, trust me. But Pam's right, those are, it's a nice run. Those detective covers are fantastic from that era. Uh, six nine sixty two. Oh, that. Really cool one. Yeah. It's funny how the Azrael Batman suit went because everyone kept wanting like a harder Batman that would like really mess up these opponents and kill them. So they're like, "All right, we'll give it to you." And it was, and then they made Azrael Batman and gave him the suit. Everyone was like, "Oh, we hate this. We hate, we have an eight. Let's give us Bruce back." And then they bring Bruce back. And then now looking back at it, everyone's like, "Oh, cool! That Azrael Batman suit showed up again. That was so cool!" Like y'all need to make up your minds. Yeah, that was Azbat. Yeah. Yeah. Like he was Bruce. I will say his suit was cool, but the fingers on the gloves were stupid. A little bit. But 964. Mm, look at that. 966. I like that a lot. Yeah. We're almost done, ladies and gents, I promise. No, these are great. Yeah. 975. Oh, look at that one. Fantastic. Yeah. Like I said, man, this was, you know, you'll really enjoy it when you sit down to read it. I that was such a I loved it. That was such a fantastic book at the time. Yeah. 980. Yeah. Look at that. And she's finally getting to the point where she's starting to know like author, like uh, writers and artists. So she'll pick it up. She goes, she, when she saw Diddy and she's like, this is something's killing children writer, isn't it? I was like, yeah. 983. 984. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 994. All right, now we're getting into Mossy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, I think I think the special cover for me is coming up because I know who's in it. I think you do. Jim Corgan. Yeah. Yeah. Nine ninety eight. This one is nine ninety eight. That's that, a great cover. That is a really cool one. Is that for Fabok or Fabok or Fabok? Either yeah. him or at least either Fabok or Gary Frank. Yeah, like I'm gonna have to look because it doesn't have the names like they do yeah. now. It doesn't matter. That's that's yeah. just. Well, which issue is it? I'll look it up. Uh, this is nine ninety eight. That may be an alternate cover, Tim. I'm sure it is. All right, this one is one uh one thousand one. Mm-hmm. Look at that. That's cool. This one is one thousand six. There we go, Spectre. 
Yeah. That was two issues, and they were fantastic. You need both. Yeah. They are very good. And this is the one on Gary, 1007. That is a great cover. That is one of my favorite covers of that year. Um, have you read those two issues, 106, 107? No. We, we've been literally just buying them up. and we've been I want to hear from you after you've read them. Those, Tomasi uh, wrote it, and um, Kyle Hotz did the art. And, mm -hmm. and, oh, they thought they had a Spectre series that was going to come out of that, and it didn't come out, and they were both brokenhearted. Oh, it would have been so good. Yeah, I just looked it up. That 998 cover is the B cover by Gary Frank. That was by Frank. Nice. All right, 1009. Oh, very cool. Uh, ten ten. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Ten thirteen. Nice. Yeah, a lot of these were, there's a few books that were expensive, obviously, but a lot of them were dollar issues we found, which we were very pleased with. Yeah, absolutely. And they're in nice shape. You're the villain oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, that's when he brought, um, when he brought Nora back and it didn't really go the way he thought it would. Yeah. 1017. Yeah. yeah. Oh, love that. 1018. So I got to ask when you, you know, now with it being you and Precious, when you put the books away after you read them, put them, you know, in the long box or short boxes, whatever you have, is there like, oh, here's all of my books and here's all Precious books, or is it just here's all of our books? We have them uh, organized in CLZ so we know mm -hmm. like what box is what and basically who's got what. Okay. So it's not, it's, they're all put together, mm -hmm. but in there, it'll say like, there's an owner part. So it'll be like Precious or me or whatever. So that way we know, but realistically it's both bars. Yeah. But 10, 19. Look at that. Nice. 10, 23. That's, oh, that's a great Joker cover. Yeah. Yeah. 1024. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. 1030. The fact that you were getting these, most of them for a dollar books, pretty cool, too. Yeah. yeah and, and I think we got 45 out of these were dollar books. Nice. I mean, that's cheap recover price. Yeah. 1038. And it's cool because, like I said, that story being so good when you finish, you're like you're not having to wait another month. To be like, oh man, I can't wait for the next issue. I don't have to. Ten thirty-five. Ten thirty-five. Oh, I remember that story. That was a pretty good one too. Ten fifty-five. Uh, look at that. Nice, nice, nice. Ten fifty-seven. Oh, love that cover. Yeah. Okay, and this ends the detective stuff at 10.58. Oh, that's a cool one, too. So good. All right, now these next three, I got to say, I got these strictly for, because of Uncle Gary. I'm saying it because it's true. <laughs> we talked you. about them. You've been asking me about them. I was going to get the trade of it, but I found them finally at uh, Maze of Fantasy and Lockport, Illinois. Longbow Hunters. Oh, oh Swamp nice. Thing Green. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. One. That was a really cool series. The, the, the art in that is spectacular. It oh, is. Oh, yes. Yeah. I've read issues one and two I so far. I look forward to hearing what you what? I read issues you one read and one and two. Yeah. And three. Hey, have you liked one and two so far? Oh, it's it's amazing. Like I didn't think, Isn't it? yeah, I didn't think it'd be that good. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Doug makes it is good. Doug makes his art. Gonna read so it? Good too. Yeah, gonna yeah, read she really likes the art. She's like, I'm in. Yeah. All right, man. So everything. Yeah, his yeah, art is very well suited for the horror stuff. So that's that's 
So Dan had already read Green Hell, but I've talked you into Green Hell, and I've talked Sal into Green Hell, so that's good. Yeah. So you talked a lot of people into it, and I ended up getting it, so. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Dan right. had already gotten it. He was already ahead of the, he was already there on his own, but Sal, I talked into it, and I'm you glad you did. Much? So just come yeah. here. Read it. It's going to be good. Well, he walked out of Comic Logic with it. So. Yeah, because yeah, he took him to the beach to read that weekend. Yep. Absolutely, and he loved it, so that was pretty cool. All right, old Gary, time for the spotlight. All right, well, before we get the spotlight, we'll get – and actually, the spotlight's going to be something I bought, but it'll be uh, – because I bought 20 of one title, that'll yeah. be the spotlight. All Jay right, so – not know anything about that. <laughs> not today. <laughs> yeah, I had a know. spotlight, ladies and gentlemen. It was everything. Yeah, there we the go. The effective comic spotlight. Yeah. Yep. So we'll, we'll go with um, – We'll go with maybe some of the least exciting stuff first. And those are books that I already owned. So my, my upgrades. Okay, so let's see. So an upgrade I got uh, that I had that I I own all these books, but I got better copies of. Got a good deal. My buddy Tom Cellini from Comics and Gaming. Got FF169. So there we go. I got... Uh, Avengers 126 was one that I had in bad shape. So, so what do you do with the ones when you upgrade them like this? What do you do with the other ones you have? Do you keep yeah, them or do you just kind of... Well, it depends. On, on the DCs, I keep them because they were ones I would have had as a kid. On mm -hmm. the Marvel ones, I, I, I might move them. Like if there's any value with Damien, I may move them. So And I'll get a little bit of trade value. So that's what I, that's what I do on those. Mm -hmm. um, here's Cap one seventy six, and um, Captain America one eighty nine. So yeah, so I get a little bit of trade value on on them. So these when I pull these out, I'll probably do that um, one ninety one. So it's nice to nice to get upgrades and get you know good deals on them one ninety five. I mean, they have price stickers on them, but Tom, Tom took care of me, so I didn't pay all that. Okay, so those were upgrades. Um, oh, TJ had a question for you. Is, is that I think was a little early for the beast on that Avengers? Yeah, that's Black Panther, but you know, same color scheme. So Beast was one thirty-seven where he first appeared on the Avengers, but in the same time frame, TJ, you are right on the money, brother. All right, so th those were upgrades. Um, I I have been not – so one of my collecting goals for the year was my um, Ghost Riders, and I'm, I've am i got a couple more. There's number three that I got that I needed. And – I love that Ghost Rider logo too. Yeah, it was a cool logo. And I got number yeah. 10 that I needed. Nice. So now I need – of the original Johnny Blaze 81 issue series. I need two, only two, only two. Nice. Might be nine and 11. Those might be the two issues I need. Um, so that'll, those dominoes are going to fall soon. So that'll be a complete run soon. Chamber of Chills that I needed. <laughs> That's a great cover. Yes. What are you danging, TJ? What are you danging, baby? The fact that um, he was on that cover. Oh, oh. Got gotcha. you. Um, 14, but I appreciate you trying. So, Miss Marvel, I'm down to needing about three of. Here's 14. Here is 21. Uh, thank you, TJ. Yeah, I love those Ghost Riders. I am almost done. In the, you know, is that one? Is that one when um, when Cochran was doing the book? Doing what? Which book? Miss um, Marvel. Miss Marvel. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. I haven't opened these. And they don't say on that side. Um, that that's the last issue. So this one sometimes is a little harder to find. So that's twenty three. So that's the last issue. Um, yeah, I have not read these Miss Marvel, so I'll find out. Also, I got something because y'all listen to me and and buy books that I recommend. I got this trade, awesome, for five bucks. And yes, you know you wow. had me at nudity. There is nudity in it. So <laughs> I got that. Mark Nathan, so five bucks. I got a great so story I, in it. 
Got that trade. Yeah. So you let me know what you think of that when you're done. I surely will. Yeah, um, I'm interested to know too. Here's mm. another book that I bought as an upgrade. And I have this issue, but this is a real sweet copy. Superman Family 165. So Ooh. Superman Family 164 is the first issue. And with these 100 pages, it's all about these um, square bound. Yeah. You know? yeah. And this one's in really nice shape. So it's in a crappy bag. It'll look better when I get a good bag. But um, I, so, once, so Jimmy Olsen, 163 is the last issue of that. 164, Jimmy Olsen... It kept the Jimmy Olsen numbering a Superman family, and Lois Lane jumped in it, and Supergirl became a part of it. And you see here where they have the rotating the characters there. So, um, and Superman family, I believe, went from 164 to 222. I have them all, but this was one of my original 20 or 30 books that I owned, and so my copy is nowhere near as good as this. So it was a nice little upgrade to have that. So I, you know, so I, I upgraded that. Happy to do that. Speaking of Lois Lane, I did not have this one, but it's a fun yeah. cover. So, oh, that is cool. And, you know, now, now I know why Superman's marrying Wonder Woman instead of me. She just saved my life. They're a super team. How about that? <laughs> so, one thirty six. You go and this to cons real fast, and you're doing like upgrades. Do you have like a list of, and you're just like, I'm gonna try to find this yep. first before I find the rest. No, I have a list. I have my list of my needs, and I have a. I have on there. I have my upgrade list too. What I need to upgrade, so I know. Okay. And I have. And I have. I have BS. I have. Okay, so I have a whole system. The worst is RBS, really bad shape. Um, then I have BS, bad shape. Then I have OK. Then I have AOK, and then I have AAOK. Meaning that's a really good book. What the hell are you even thinking about upgrading it for? But it's part of the sickness. <laughs> and uh, and how many? And what do you have beside all of your Swamp Thing number nines? Or does yeah, that not even matter? You just doesn't even matter. You, doesn't matter. You're like, I see it, and it must be mine. Well, it depends. It's got to be the price has got to be right, and it's got to be decent enough copy. So okay. You know how the Highlander had the saying, you know, there can be only one before he would chop somebody's head off and get their power. Gary has that saying. He says there can be only one when he finds a copy of Swamp Thing 9 and buys it, as in there can be only one person that owns all of these. Every single well, one. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Well, I'm working. But I'll give it I'll out. Buy so one before you take them all. Yeah, uh, we will. Um, so here's the world's finest. One, 183. Yeah. He, he has given out copies to. I have given out copies. We're lucky. Yep, Dan. Dan has a copy that was yeah. gifted to him. Um, so the Superman, the world's finest one eighty three. I'm about, I'm about ten or twelve issues from having like ninety eight up a world's finest. So wow, yeah, I'm doing some good work on that. Um, I got Adventures Comic three fifty nine. I am, I think I'm a dozen issues from having all of the Legion appearances, mm -hmm. which is a big deal. Big deal, big honking deal. So, do you have a favorite iteration of the league? Because uh, the Legion, or, or the, the of the Legion, I mean, because they they've like you know changed it so many times. The the Legion that Grill was drawn, yeah, when he was doing it, yeah. So, so I love that that iteration from a that's about ninth. But again, a lot of it's when you first started. So I was like seventy four or so, nineteen seventy four or so. So he was drawn for like 74 to 1976. I love the way he drew the characters. I love that iteration of the Le of the Legion a lot. Um cuz I remember when I was a kid like I I knew Legion of Superheroes and that Legionnaires book came out and I remember reading mm -hmm. it when it started and like it just confused the hell out of me. I was like what cuz there's so many characters. I I get that. Well I no, not that. so many characters but because the Legionnaires book had kind of changed and was like oh we're uh, doing this different thing and and it just, I think they were doing a Legion book too at the same time. And it just, yeah, I, I, I think so. And I, and I get, I get how that can be confusing. One cool thing they do with the Legion, even though there are a lot of characters is they'll have the name of the character and then they'll have their power set next to it. Yeah. For people that jump in and that's a really good way to have it. So action comics, two seventy, Superman, the only, the, the, what's it's old 10 center. What's really cool about this or what, I liked about this book is this is the highest number of action I still needed. So oh, awesome. So now I've got two, number two seventy. Oh, okay. 
Nice. So, to so now my action run is from 264 up. So, so I believe that's if it's it's either early 1960 or late 1959 up. So that's how far back I go with the, this. So 270 was the, the highest number I needed. So now 263 is the next I need. So pretty good. I got a Bernie Wrightson book I didn't have. Captain oh, Stern. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. 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 Bernie Wrightson, Captain Stern. Um, I got, here we go. So Diane got three Golden Age books. Got them from um, Mark Nathan. And uh, she made a deal with him, and it was pretty cool. He dealt with it pretty nice. So we got Western. Let me give the first edition. This, these are from 1950. Western number 13. Ooh, that looks cool. Yeah. So Western Comics. I think it went about 80 issues or so. So I, I didn't have any copies of any of the Western comics. I have some all-star Western and things like that. And I have the modern iteration of that. Um, oh, there we go. Grills Legion was fantastic. Um Pam, so it it yeah that that is the best, um, and they've collected a lot of those issues, but uh, so this is number number thirteen, really cool, vibrant cover, um, issue number seventeen, and again these are nineteen fifty. Wow, so, that was, the colors on that are great. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, nineteen fifty, man, that was yeah going back a little bit, and then number twenty two. Yep, November 60. Thank you for that. So by having that, if that's November 60, then 264 is very early 1960 or maybe into 59. So I'm almost got a continuous run from, you know, into the 50, late 50. So here's Western 22. So there we go. So those are three Golden Age books from 1950. So pretty cool. For you, though. Like, that's amazing. What would you say? said verifying those for you is just amazing in itself. Well, she bought them, really she bought them for her. She wanted them. Oh, and what's kind of cool is on one of these books, number 22, it's got a certificate in the back. Okay. And this is amazing. You know, you think I got a collection. Jerome Wenker, this certificate of authenticity is to show that this comic book is from the estate of Jerome Wenker. It was purchased in good faith from Mr. Wenker's estate, and it is part of one of the largest collections of DC comics ever assembled. Jerome started collecting comic books. This blows me away. In 1983, he only started in 83, so that, that's just that's nine years after me, and he assembled one of the most complete collections of DC comics that were known to exist. He had re he had regular newsstand copies up until the 90s direct issues afterwards the collection you sure you ready for this the collection was only 22 short of being complete only 22 short of being complete and 84 copies he had of books were incomplete meaning they missed the page or something in the book but still this is a piece of comic book history yeah. so this is part of that great pedigree collection only 22 issues he did not have so I have not looked him up yet. I've been kind of busy this week, Jerome Wenker. But, of course, I want to know what 22 issues did he not have. And immediately you think, okay, action, detective. But it's possible he had those. There are a lot of rarer books. You know, Detective 27, you can find copies out there. Detectives 1 through 26 are brutal. Try finding those copies because – the ones with Batman on the cover, more people saved because that was such a dynamic character. But the earlier ones, people didn't save as much. Um, new fun comics that ended up becoming more fun comics, those were tabloid size books, you know, like the tabloid newspaper size. Yeah. Those are extremely rare and hard to find. So I've got to think that it's a mixture of maybe some of the most expensive ones, but some of these that are just super, super rare. So, uh, you know... It, it, I, I'm just really fascinated. What 22 issues did he not have? So yeah. I will have to research that cat. And like I said, think I got a good collection. My God, Jerome Wenker. And he started in 83. He started nine years 
after me and, and amassed that. So hats off to him. I imagine he was caked up too. I imagine he had some serious cash going on. <laughs> but anyway. I mean, he had to, to have been able to, to amass that yep. collection and not starting until 83. Right. right. Because by then action had started to jump up a lot. Um, because the 1970s Overstreet, the first Overstreet volume that was published, um, it was uh, $300 for Action 1 is what was valued. By 83, that, that price had jumped quite a bit. But, you know, of course, nowhere near what we're... I, I mean, you know, I'm not sure if it was at 10000 yet, but still, it, you know, but it was definitely over 1000 by that point. I would say it was somewhere... I'd guess it was somewhere in 1983, it was somewhere between five and ten. But you know, I well, Jerome Winker is listed on uh LinkedIn as living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he's listed as a collector slash dealer. Well, there you go. Is it and it's got him still has because it does say his estate at one point. Can you have an estate if you're still living? I, I don't know, but I looked yeah. when I looked it up when I had looked it up it earlier, there's a thing a thing on the CGC forum. Mm -hmm. Where somebody said, "Hey, I got this book and it's got this certificate in it. What is it?" And somebody yeah. else had commented, "Oh yeah, this guy, you know." And this is in 2022. Yeah. Commented like, "Oh yeah, this guy lives in Minneapolis." So I don't know if they're just looking at the LinkedIn thing or not. And assuming yeah, so, it could yeah, be, and, and, you know, it could be something that just happens to still be up there. Right. So, uh, uh, and, and if he started in '83, you know, that would probably make him younger than me. But that doesn't mean he couldn't have had a shorter life. Yeah. You know, I know the guy that created Mike's Amer Mike's um, Amazing World of Comics just passed away this past year, and he, he that site is one of my favorite sites, and he made it so that site will stay up there in perpetuity, and it'll be updated when it needs it, and all that. So that is one of my favorite sites. Okay, so now Tomahawk covers. I get certain ones, and Neil Adams did a really great. Yeah, or could have been the Blue Devil. Neil <laughs> Adams did a really yeah, great Blue Devil like that, DJ. Run run of covers. Look how great that Adam's that cover is. Cool. So he, he did about 20 issues of covers, and I ultimately will get all of them because I'm such a Neil Adams fan. But this was toward the end of this run of this book. I, I want to say it was in the 140s, 150 when Tomahawk ended. So yeah, you want to yeah, complete every issue of Tomahawk. Good luck. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, good luck because they're just not out there as much. All right. So I got two really cool tone covers. One is a GI Combat 93. Ooh. Yeah. Come on, boys. Isn't that special? Yeah, I saw it in person. That's one of the ones when he was between choosing between that and another one. He's like, which one do you think you should get? Asking me and Sal, both of us were like, you should get the plain one. Well, all right. And the other one was really cool where he was in like oh, yeah. sewer. He's in, he's in a sewer shooting through the open manhole cover at a tank with a bazooka. And it was really cool perspective cover. But this is just kind of neat with the bridge and the tank overturned i mean that but that's the uh, that famous gray tone style cover that um russ heath did so that's that's um 94 93 and then here here's uh 102 another gray tone cover nice so and the, these aren't cheap these aren't cheap there's some you know you know they're not they're uh they're not quite big boy books but they're you know they're not they're not cheap. Um, I got a nice bit of a sergeant uh, army at wars. There's a one thirty. So the thing that's cool about this is the pink cover. Whenever if there's you know and I'm gonna whenever you find a, a pink cover that is bright like this, get it because the pink is one of the easiest colors to fade. So when you get a really cool pink cover that's bright and vibrant. Um, you know, and you're you're vacillating on it. Go ahead and usually get it because you may not find one that looks that good ever again. Um, here's our Army at War 140. That was 130, I think, the pink cover. Here's 140. That one's cool. He's got the go go checks plane. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he sure does. Yep. Um, our Army at War uh, 144. <clears throat> That's a great cover. Yep. Sure is. 144. Um, these Kubrick covers are so good. 183. Nice. Yep. And again, these are bright. There's your go go checks. Yep. 183. Sergeant Rock 192. 
And these covers are all so bright and beautiful. Um, Sergeant Rock 204. And I'm probably, I think I'm less than 20 issues away. So Rock, Rock Army at War slash Sergeant Rock, issue 302, or 303 became Sergeant Rock. And um, to 421 or 22 when it ended. I'm like 20, I'm, I'm probably 20 issues or less away from having, um, I think like one, I don't know, uh, maybe 140 up, something like that. It's a pretty good run. Wow. <clears throat> maybe not quite 140. Yeah, maybe 140. I got a look. Anyway, here's 205. That's so. a really cool cover. Mm -hmm. And they're all, these were in really great shape and a really good price on them. So I, I jumped on them, got them from Mark Nathan. Uh, cards, comics, and collectibles. Check them out. Mike, Mark Nathan is the um, is the man behind the Baltimore Comic Con. We did a great interview with him, and you will see that. And of course, that'd give me another Swamp Thing nine. <laughs> so, this was from the same guy that um, Sal got his copy from. He liked the other one just a little better. They're really close, so it was good. I got a good deal on it, and uh, he gave Sal a good deal, and then I went back and got this one. I made this my last purchase of the day just because I thought it would be fun. So that's going to end up that. I'm going to segue now into um, my showcase. And that is because I got um, 20 issues of the same book, of, of a title I was working on. So 20 issues of the same book sounds like Sal with Venom every month. But, but yeah. It's true. 20 issues of the same title. Um, and this title is Marvel Team Up. And going into this week, and I needed, and it's 150 issues plus, I think, seven annuals. Going to, and, and it was about a month ago, I finished Marvel 2-in-1, which was with The Thing, and that was 100 issues plus five annuals. I got the last one I needed there. So Team Up will fall this year, without a doubt. So I got 20 issues. I needed 28, so I only need eight more. So Marvel Team Up 30. And these are in nice shape, too. Spider-Man and the Falcon. And... All but one of these I got from Mr. Tom Cellini. 33. Spider-Man and the Heart. And they're all in very and and all of these are from a original collector. So he sold it. So I so I'm only the second owner of these, which I think is really cool. Nice. 34, Spider-Man and Valkyrie. I really like this cover. 37. Spider-Man and Man Wolf. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, again, this is the showcase. Spider-Man and that great Avenger, the Beast. There you go. Look at that. Look at that great Avenger. That is a cool cover. Mm-hmm. And the Griffin. Yeah. Um, here we go. Number 39, Spidey and the Human Torch. Nice. Yeah. Spidey and the Human Torch. All right, number 41. Yeah, Spider-Man, Scarlet Witch. I do like that one. Yeah. yeah. Spider-Man and the Witch. And a lot of these are Gil Kane covers. 43, Spider-Man and Doctor Doom. So, oh, it's like a yeah. superhero, supervillain crossover team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Moon Dragon and Doom is in this one too, so it continued on. And the witch is down there too, still. So I think she's still hanging around. Spider Man and Kill Raven. There's a team up you wouldn't expect to see. No, Not all the time. You know, a lot of times they did this team ups when they were promoting books. So yeah. they're trying to sell some Kill Raven books, is why they had that. Um, Spider Man and the Thing, number 47. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, that's why for a while, every time there was a new Marvel book, it'd be like guest starring Spider Man. Like, let's get them to buy it. Hope they like it enough to come back next month. Yep. Spider Man and Doc Strange. All right. We're at 55, Spider Man and Warlock. That's cool. Yep. This one was a little more expensive than the others. I forget what first appearance it had in there or why it was important, but it was. Um, I'll look at which issue was it? 55. There's something in it that's a little extra. Marvel Team Up 55. Um, but of course, Tom gave me a really good deal on all of them. 
I got yeah, I got all these Marvel team ups for less than a hundred. Um, Spider Man and Black Widow, fifty seven. Nice. That was one I I remember that I had when I was a kid. Yep, yep. And this was this was Cockrum. That was Cockrum art. Kill Raven, worst costume ever. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with you on that. Um, Zombie Cat. Oh, I know who Zombie Cat is. Hey, Zombie right. Cat. Good to first uh, fifty five was. First appearance of the Power Gem, first appearance of the Time Gem, and first appearance of the Gardener and Elder of the Universe. There we go. So Stones and the Gardener. Um, so 76, Spider-Man Doc Strange again. Um, 80, Spider-Man Doc Strange and Clea. So they're really trying to push some Doc Strange. Oh, during nice. This, yeah, trying to do this time period. Um, Spidey, 87. Spidey and the Black Panther. And again, it's neat to see that all these were from the same collector. So they're all in that really nice shape, you know, that he, he was bagging them and boarding them. Spidey 81. There we go. <clears throat> Spidey 102. Spidey and Doc Sampson. That's pretty cool. And the last cover, I'll have to show you another book after the last cover. The last cover is pretty lame. Spidey 128, Spidey and Captain America. It's a oh, photo yeah, cover. It's just cover. a photo cover of the cap, and then Spidey is drawn in there. It's just is really ridiculous. So <laughs> that looks like the red brown Captain America, you know. So, but you know, the head, the little head one, that's John Byrne there. But anyway. So oh, the, um, the red brown Captain America didn't he have? Uh, was it uh, maybe it's not red brown. The see through shield. Yeah, I guess he did, but it's just the dude in the costume. Then I don't know. So, but I'm to trying to the, think. It to was... cleanse the palette here. We'll see a great cover okay. after yeah. that last goofy cover. There we go. Cleanse the palette. But anyway, those are the showcases. Twenty more. Only eight more Marvel team ups, and they are all mine. And I have. Right, you know, I have m most of the early issues, so there we go. So there not not really any hard ones left. Actually, I do need the black costume Spider-Man 141, but I have Damien has it for me, so I will be getting it soon. Next, yeah. there was a someone famous. I'm trying to remember who it was that like one of their first gigs was. Um, like doing a thing for Marvel where they would wear the Captain America suit for stuff like that. I want to say it was Jonathan Frakes, but I might be wrong on that. I don't know. I have to look it up again. Okay, so TJ has a question. I may have asked, but question. How do you all keep up with your want and need list? I still have old paper list. Is CLZ app the way to go or something else? I mean, I do. for me, it's, it's CLZ because it has your want list and what's in your collection. Um, that one does help me a lot because of the fact that I can find that first print and kind of know what the difference is between. Because I know I Sal saw the Superman uh, Man of Steel AT. He was like, oh, that's the second printing. And I almost, my heart dropped because I was like, I'm sure this is the first print. <laughs> like I was 100% sure I was right. But yeah, I, that's the way I do it. Um, I mean, I don't know what the rest of you, I know Oh, Gary, you got a system, so. Um, I, I do both. So CLZ is nice to have, especially if I don't have my list with me. But I have a like a steno book that is from the 70, late 70s, early 80s. And I have stuff written down. I'm not a guy, like I know Dan, Dan does spreadsheets and all that. I'm not a computer guy, so I have handwritten a lot of these things. I've, like, so at, say, say action is, you know, well, now it's a lot of issues. But I had... I have, you know, I have written the numbers and then I cross them out. So I cross them out, you know, and some of these I'm writing hundreds and hundreds of numbers. But then I get to a point where, you know, I have a complete run of so I didn't have to. When I first did this, it was in the early 80s. So at that point, action was at probably 400 and something. And I'd have those numbers written out. Since then, I haven't had to do that because I, I've got unbroken runs. But, um, I, so I have that book, and then I, I get index cards that are quicker for me to have and carry around and look at. And on the index cards, I can write what needs to be upgraded. So I'll have what issues I need and then what issues I need to upgrade. So I'll see both of those there. 
And um, CLZ is nice to have as backup, but CLZ can't tell me what I need to upgrade. You know what right. I'm saying? It, so that can't have that. So the cards are easier, and to whip the card sometimes is faster than me to than to go through my phone. You know, it's easier to look at that card. So I have the index cards of the ones that I am, or just a sheet of paper where I have written down. Because sometimes where I've had these written down and I've gotten so many of the issues, then you're sitting there parsing between all the crossouts. I mean, where's the one I need? So I have to update. For, you know, I'll update and have the um, 20 or 30 issues I need, and then it gets smaller and, and have it where it's easier to see. But I do both. You know, I, I, I rely on the um, paper more at a con, but when I'm out and about, I don't, I don't always take it with me, and I stop in a comic shop. It's nice to have my CLZ that I can use. Yeah. yeah. Well, and CLZ, too, I mean, the you know, the downside of – relying on that is especially some of these cons when there's a lot of people using cell phones like you're not going to get good service i've had it before where like i don't have clz but i've just wanted to look something up and i'm like all right the internet's going super super slow so keep for- that list keep that list tj go paper baby keep the paper yeah. and, and clz is good just for me to help keep track you know yeah that's how i know what my numbers are and, and of course it doesn't count my doubles so, but but still, it's it's nice to. Um, I, I like having it. I love having it. I love having the visual. The other thing is you can get the visuals of the books too. You can see what, you know, what you, what you need and what you're looking for. You know, you can add your doubles in there, right? I don't know how to. Well, you just rescan it. It'll say you're in have it. Just add the collection. It'll add it. Yeah, but then how do you? But I don't know how you see that though. When you, I mean, I okay, I know that it says that you've already added. What do you want to do? And you add it, and I guess it'll add a number, but it won't show you when you look up that title that you have two of that thing. Will yes. It? Okay. Well, like I got three Guy Gardner Warriors for no reason because I got them at a con and they were in a pack, and it, I have all three of them on there. Okay, well you'll have to show me. And oh yeah, I'll, I'll sure sell. You'll have, to, you'll have to show me in person because I don't know how that works. It's like my phone. I don't know half the shit my phone does. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, I yeah, I, I don't have CLZ anymore. I have um, – You bet, TJ. Paper. You bet. So I have two lists. So I have a spreadsheet that that I um, that I add stuff to for, for what Sounds I have. Good idea, man. That's a good idea. Yep. And, um, and my spreadsheet, it just has the – title of the book and it's all in alphabetic order is the title of the book the issue number um what year it came out what company it came out for and then there's like a little thing at the um at the end where i could put if it was if it's something different like if it's a variant or a second print or if it's autographed or graded or whatever like i have a little note thing for that so i have that that i put everything in like every week when i get my weekly pulls i put them in whenever i get back issues i put them in and then what i do is i update that and i have the i have it on a flash drive but uh the first of each whenever the the first of the month is when i put my new pulls in there i'll email that to myself so you know god forbid and i know what if anything happens to the flash drive i'll still have it updated um I'll still have an updated one in my email that I can just pull up anywhere. And then I have just a word document that I have all the stuff I need. And that, in fact, I have one of the old ones here that is like this. And you can see, I just have this, I'll just like fold it, stick it in my back pocket. Whenever I go, you know, and looking at something, I just pull it out. All the books that I need, they're all in alphabetical order. So if I'm like, Oh, I'm looking for fantastic four, I'll know, you know, Oh no! Okay, I just got to flip to this page. Here's all the ones I need, and I will, you know. And then I'll, as you can see, I'll cross them off as I find them. And then, you know, when I get back home, I'll just pull up the uh, pull up the one I have saved, take out the ones that I bought, and you know, reprint another one. Uh, reprint another one for you know whatever the next show I go to is, and then I have. I have some stuff separated, like, uh, like, because I didn't feel like adding them all back in when I decided I wanted to like 
complete the Valiant run for all the original Valiant books. So I have a separate thing like, all right, here's all the Valiant stuff I need. Here's some like, you know, Rocketeer stuff. And then like for those Marvel portrait covers from the 80s, I have the complete set of that, but I want to get doubles of some of them for the for the books that I'm working on runs of. So I can have like one copy that's in there with the run and then another copy with the complete set. So I've got like a separate thing of that of, okay, here's just the doubles of the portrait covers I got to get just, you know, just for those runs. And then we had the, 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 some, you know, the comment that, you know, they, they use the notes on the phone. That's pretty smart too. Yeah. I've done that before too. If yeah. I'm, you know, if it's something that's like, uh, if it's something like that's, that's really recent, and I just, oh, I got to remember to pick this up. I'll just put a note for it. So when I, in my phone, so when I go to the shop, I remember like, you oh, too, yeah, this yep. came out like two months Thanks, ago. TJ. You know, let me pick it up. Absolutely. All right. Well, yeah, TJ, have a great weekend. We showed off a lot tonight. <laughs> yeah. A lot of books. I can't wait for Sal to come on next week because then he has to deal with Tim. Um, and Tim and him will have 500 books each. <laughs> yeah, Sal picked up books with the show, too. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He said he had about a short box as well. So I'm sure him and Tim will be going neck for neck next week. Um, but, guys, as usual, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And we're, real fast, we're going to give our sponsors a quick shout-out. And the first is Dubby Energy, guys. If you guys have not heard us talk about this before, you're going to hear it again. Go check out Dubby Energy at W.GG. They got a bunch of new flavors coming out. They're bringing back the metal tumblers that they were using before. And at checkout, if you use the keyword code hyphen X, you'll save yourself 10%. Trust us when we say the whole team's used it. We all love it. No bad aftertaste, no jitters, nothing like Red Bull or uh, Monster for that matter. Is Everyone has been tasting great. I know Sale's still upset about Monkey Madness, but pretty sure they'll bring something for him. And then for our other sponsor for tonight, uh, guys, go check out... Nirvana Comics in Knoxville, Tennessee, when you guys get a chance to, and also check out their website. They have a comic for everyone, and they want to give it to you. Lastly, I will wait for that one, because that one, I don't care, you can do your whole spiel, but let's get, uh, Dan, when they can't find you here, where can they find you? We're not doing Kodak stuff. Oh yeah, when I'm not doing the Codex stuff, check me out on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. Uh, you know, post a few times a week, so go give me a follow, go give me some likes, and uh, leave some comments. And you know, I always ask people leave some comments and let me know what you'd like to see me draw, or you know, if I'm you know, if you want to hear me, you know, when I put music up, if you want to hear me do a song, like because honestly, sometimes I'll Thank finish up all the stuff I'm working on, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I can't decide what to draw next. I need someone to make a suggestion. So, Pam, thank you, thank you for joining you, us. I was Have getting fun. everybody out of the way right now. <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks, Derek. Appreciate it, brother. And then, Sal. All right, Sal. Um, listen, you can catch me at Comic Logic, and Comic Logic is proud to be a sponsor of the Codex Station. And I am a proud co-owner of Comic Logic, and so please come in and see us. We're Loudoun County, Virginia's only comic store. <clears throat> we had our ninth anniversary party today, so that is in the rearview mirror now. But in two weeks, we have a really great event on Free Comic Book Day. We have Mr. Um, Brendan Wayne coming, <clears throat> and he is the actor that plays the Mandalorian in the great TV show. When the helmet is on, that is Brendan Wayne doing the acting. Um, and he will be signing autographs at our shop, Comic Logic. And um, I'm looking forward to meeting him because he's John Wayne's grandson. So that means a whole lot to me to meet some Hollywood royalty. And John Wayne is my guy. So to shake the hand of his uh, bloodline, it's going to be pretty cool for me. Um, after that, um, our other big event we have coming up is uh, May 19th. It is our Spring Lot Con. So we turn our parking lot of Comic Logic into a... Um, Mini Comic Con. There'll be comics. You know, you have several comic vendors, including you know, our stuff. Um, my good buddy Damien Hill from Warthog Comics, who is my personal comic dealer. Um, we'll have him there. We'll have uh, local authors with their books. We'll have local artists with their, you know, with some of their great work to sell. There'll be toys. So um, a lot of wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful booths there, wonderful businesses to check out. It's family friendly. 
Dan and Sal both brought their uh, their families there, and they had a good time. So please come out and see us when we did the fall one. So we did spring and fall. This is our spring one. Please come out and see us. I would love to see you, see you there. So uh, there you go. See you can see uh, Eternal Knight will be there too. He's he's a veteran of our lot cons. So please come out and see us. We'd love to have you. And lastly, let's give some love to Comic Character of the Day, the site by uh, Archduke Kevy. That um, he is the reason we are all acquainted. I'll do a cover of the day. Dan will do the question of the day, and he'll do random panel of the day. Jamie lets opens the gate and let people come in. He is an administrator, and he lets people join that great site. He's always watching that site, like he's always watching us. So that's where you can find me. And then. Let's kick it back up to the man, the myth, the legend, the founder, the man with the vision that started this wonderful channel that we are all proud to be a part of and that we look forward to imparting, you know, great comic knowledge, great comic wisdom, you know, just great love and passion of comics to you. And the reason that we can do that is because of the vision of that man right there that built this station. He built it brick by brick by brick. So what we have and what we're proud of, that man right there right there j-dub made it yeah all right well guys you guys know what i'm about to say go check out the codexstation.com it's your one-stop shop for everything codex get some merch meet the team let us know what you like and don't like and find all of our hang on oh gary i'll let you give it to him well let me tell you something here at the codex station all the hosts not just me all the hosts we have all the socials and we would like nothing better than to give them to you Yes, and you can find all those on thecodexstation.com. There's a lot, so trust me, you don't want to miss out. But as for tonight, it was a great show. Thank you, everyone in chat. Thank you, everyone that you or showed up and watched. We're out. We will see you in the next one. Later. Someone going to say it or do I have to go up? Okay.